Uh, okay, so with that, uh, welcome to uh, our control theory workshop for the summer. Uh, this first uh, session is going to be mostly introduction stuff. Um, and yeah, so I guess we'll get going. So I guess just to start off, what is control theory? Uh, and first thing, I'd like, do you guys see what all these things have in common? It's not a rhetorical question. You're allowed to answer. Well, well, the op amp is negative feedback. <laughs> yes, they they all uh, are using or can be described using control theory. Um, so to give a little bit better of a definition, um, control theory deals with you know the control of a dynamical system, essentially any kind of thing that you system that you can describe with mathematical equations. We'll we'll give a better definition for that a little bit later on. But the end goal is to force the system to behave in a way that is desirable. Um, that could be getting a pool of water to stay at the same temperature, or it could be to fly an airplane in a straight line. It can mean many things. Um, before we talk a lot more about control theory stuff. I want to do some background on dynamical systems, though, since that's kind of important. Um, and to start off, uh, just in general, a dynamical system has a, uh, it's a system where you can describe the current state as a point within a state space. And basically what that means is, you know, you have a uh, state space, that's essentially your domain of all possible states, and your current state occupies a point in that. Um, you can think of each axis as, you know, one of your states. You have a, uh, for example, you might have a position axis and a velocity axis or something. Uh, so your state would be position and velocity. In, in this example, you can see I have basketball, which has a height and a velocity. Um, uh, kind of going along with that, you can see an example, the uh, happy parrot, the, he's parting, he's having a good time because uh, that vector is within the state space. It is a feasible state for the system and that it's a uh, too long real vector uh, with the you know 10 corresponding height and the minus two corresponding to velocity. Uh, whereas the one on the right has three components that's more components than exist in this state space uh and so that doesn't really work out um yeah so the way we you know actually use a state space is they all have some kind of system dynamics which essentially describe how the state changes over time um and they're pretty much always a function of the state. Uh, sometimes of time, it depends. Um, but, you know, for example, uh, the system dynamics of our basketball, the you know main driving factor is gravity. Uh, that's what causes the different states to change. Uh, and in this case, the state does depend on, or the system dynamics do depend on the state because Gravity acts differently depending on your height. Um, to kind of tell you a bit more about that, um, essentially what this means is there are almost always differential equations. Uh, so we're, we're almost always solving, we're having an equation that solves for a change in your variable. Um, and so you can see uh, we have our x which our state vector uh height and velocity and the system dynamic dynamics the uh, x dot uh in this case the height 
that changes as a function of velocity. So the velocity can just be plugged in there. And now the velocity changes with acceleration. And that acceleration is, you know, F equals MA. That's influenced directly by gravity, uh, you know, one force on the system. Uh, is that kind of making sense so far in terms of how this is going to model a physical system? Yeah. Okay. And I, I also point out, too, that this doesn't necessarily have to be a physical thing that's moving. Um, as we saw a little bit earlier, your system could be many things. It could be, you know, a system of people buying products, or it could be, you know, birds, electrical circuits, et cetera. It can mean many things. Um, and now getting to the fun part, we have the control input. Uh, this is essentially a part of the system that we have direct control over, um, whereas the state is typically represented by the vector x, control is typically the vector u. Um, the fundamental problem of control theory is how do you decide what u should be? You get to pick what U is. Sometimes there's restrictions on what U is allowed to be. Um, like you may have your a constraint that says you can only have a U that has one component between 0 and 50 or something. You can't have anything greater or lesser. Uh, and kind of going with the basketball example, most basketballs don't have helicopter blades on them, but if they were, that would be a control input. Um, in this case, we can see the state vector, the high velocity, uh, goes along with U, the thrust. Um, and that kind of goes into the system dynamics, which is the F equals MG, but now that's minus U, the thrust. So now, going back to the original uh, slide, I want to ask if you guys would be able to look at the various things just on the slide and identify what's the system dynamics versus the control input. Do I just start with the, uh, which we call it, the thermostat? It's an easier one. Terrence, do you want to do it? Um, well, the input would be the ambient temperature around it. So the ambient temperature, keep in mind the input is the thing that we have direct control over. For a thermostat, it doesn't actually have absolute control over the temperature. It can only influence whether or not the heat is decreasing or increasing basically turning on or off a heater right so oh, in this thing what's the input of... yeah okay i guess i i should be a little bit more clear what's the like like state that's being influenced versus the control input that you're using to influence said state the state is the temperature and then we could influence it, the control input by change increasing or decreasing the temperature on the screen yeah Uh, Abby, you want to do one? I mean, quick question. What is the, is the center thing just, just supposed to be like a plane? What is the Spot. thing on oh, top of Oh, the thing of in the it? center? That's, uh, the space shuttle re-entering. This, that one's, that one's a little bit more tricky. I, I can explain that if you're not sure. Okay, I, I just wasn't sure what, like, the yellow thing was supposed oh, to that... be. Oh, <laughs> That's, that's is that the Boston awesome Dynamics I dog? On top of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just like I was really I thought it was from, like gonna be like from like a movie or something. I guess that's that a I, little like, bit unclear. Seen. Really, that should be two <laughs> pictures. I just thought it looked fun to have a spot balancing up there. <laughs> yes. Yes. Does look great. Well, actually, how about we do that? What's the control versus the state of spot? The I mean, like, 
the state would be like the I don't know the speed and position of spot because like you can control it by telling it to move a certain direction or by going a certain speed, right? That's correct. So how okay. does you know you as a user cause the dog to influence its speed, position, etc.? Is the dog autonomous? I I don't know that much about the so push it. I'm not necessarily talking about like end user type of thing. I'm more talking about like if you were programming Spot, like what you know, you're building a robot. How do you get it to like? What are the things that you're telling it to do in code to change? You know. Well, so like, for like this type of robot, kind of going back to the thermostat. Fall over. The thermostat uh, in the code, it identifies mm -hmm. it's too cold. It is below the threshold. The heater should be on. Later on, it might be too hot, so the heater decides it should be off right now. And this spot is a lot more complicated. Yeah. Um, so for spot, your control input is, you know, how the all the joints are moving. Okay. Because you, you're yeah. able to... I mean, I I assume they have some way. I mean, obviously, I don't know how their firmware works, but what's likely the case is, you know, they're deciding what angle each of the limbs should be at. Uh, and you know, in this case, it's a very complicated system. There's many joints on spot, and so you have a very large control input, um, and you also have, you know many different parts of your state vector because you know you need to know the current position of all the limbs and you also need to know where it is right now how fast it is etc um how about a more interesting one how about coronavirus down there any guesses um maybe like you can i don't know are the system dynamics uh, like the like the infection rate or like the severity of your symptoms and then like the control input is like whether or not people get vaccinated i have no idea what you're going for with that so, one. so you're kind of close so with you know disease modeling um you can model it as you have your state which would be like who how many people are infected versus how many people already had it versus dead whatever people who can't get mm -hmm. infected again um and then you have the system dynamics the, the actual dynamics of covid you know very strongly on you know I, I think the it's the like r value or something for like how quickly it transmits between people mm -hmm. i don't know i'm not a biologist <laughs> um but you know given no control input uh it would you know go through that like exponential increase or whatever um but then your kind of control inputs would be doing things like getting a vaccination that affects the system dynamics and would reduce the rate at which people get coronavirus gotcha. uh, or you know other things staying at home wearing a mask etc um yeah uh, and I guess just so we're not spending forever on the Falcon 9 is pretty similar to how spot would work in the sense that you're essentially just deciding how to actuate all the motors and what direction to point the rocket engine to get it to land safely. And I guess also how much thrust you want to be putting out in order to land correctly. Um, I guess as a final note, um, the space shuttle there, the control input in this case, um, it was a little bit like higher level, like optimal controls type stuff. Um, but you can design, you can use control theory to design the trajectory at which you re-enter the atmosphere. Um, your state, you can consider, you know, the position and orientation of the vehicle, but also the temperature of it. You know, you can't exceed a specific temperature, so you have to control the rate at which you're descending to not enter too fast and burn up um yeah okay continuing on uh we're going to look a little bit at how 
system dynamics that are actually represented. Um, so in order to apply much of control theory, we need a standardized form. Um, sometimes just having the equations for dx, um, I guess I probably should have asked, have you guys taken differential equations? Okay, I guess that's uh, kind of important. Um, so I'm not going to do any of the like how to s analytically solve differential equation stuff because that's not super important for controls. The important thing to know is, you, I mean, you've at least taken calculus, Abby. You know, like dx dt, right? How x changes over time. CS majors do take lin algebra, though, right? Yeah, we take lin algebra. The thing okay. is, is like you don't really use diffy cues at all in computer science. It's like more of an engineering thing, so I haven't taken it. But yeah. now since I'm tech, now since I'm gonna do a robotics minor, I'm gonna take it in A term. But like I've taken calculus and all yeah. that good stuff. So I've taken everything else, just not technically diffy cues. Yeah, so fortunately don't need for at least the intro level stuff, we don't need a ton of diffy cues. The important thing to know here is that that x dot that's that's basically shorthand for dx dt. Mm -hmm. um, that's essentially you know describing what the derivative of the uh, system is. A differential equation is basically any equation where your solution is a derivative and not just your straight value. Um, you know, obviously it's preferable if we could just get a s solution for x and just have a nice equation for x that's like a just as a function of time but that is very rarely possible um it's very hard to get something and solve it for just x it's usually much more practical to find an equation for x dot uh which tells you how x changes over time and then there's ways from there to kind of extrapolate to find x um, in any case, kind of going down from the right, we have the state vector uh, mentioned earlier, where you just have w one through n states uh, where, you know, x1 might be position, x2 might be velocity. It depends on what you're modeling. Um, control input, uh, you might have, oftentimes, you know, you might just have one control input. Like in the case of the uh, rocket, uh, we only have one control input that is how far we want to extend the air brakes. Um, but if you compare it to something like a plane, uh, a plane has many different control surfaces, all of which can be at different angles. And so you can have, you know, one through P control surfaces. Uh, and then the state equation, that's a, that's our equation for X dot, um, which depends on X, U, and T. Um, and we kind of combine this all to get our standard linear form, which is x dot equals ax plus bu, where a is an n by n, uh, so essentially it's a square matrix. B is a n by p, which is not necessarily a square matrix. Um, and written out more completely, um, we have, you know, x, a, uh, or sorry, this is dx, x, b, and u. And it's important to note that for a system to be linear, a and b have to be constant. Um, Nonlinear controls is a thing you can do, uh, but that's a little bit beyond the scope of this course right here. That's like a little higher level. Um, yeah. So what can, like, x1, x2, xn, what can like those values be, let's say, for like a rocket? So for a rocket, so this is one of the things, actually, you know, I realize there's not a slide on this, but this is something that's an important concept. Um, whenever you're trying to create a, you know, create a uh, uh, control law, essentially a control law is basically your algorithm that decides how to pick you for your system. Um, when you're going to do that for a system, you need to decide on how good of a how good the fidelity of your model needs to be. Um, so, in some very simple cases, you might be able to get away with modeling a rocket as just a 
on a 1D line, uh, and your rocket only has the position X along the line and it has a velocity V, um, but maybe your system's more complex and you need an X and a Y coordinate. And then you also have, um, as an example, this, this is what we did in the rocket propulsion course, is it was modeled as uh, you know a point and the rocket had a like downrange distance, which was your X, and a height altitude, your uh, Y. And then it also had a velocity, which was a magnitude, and the orientation of the uh, rocket, which was described as an angle um, off the Y axis. So that's what, like four components? Um, or you can go even more complex, like with my MQP that I did, I was modeling a rocket pretty much. The When I modeled it, I think I had 14 different state components, which I, I can, I, I might pull some of this up to show you guys in a later uh, thing, just as a very large example. But for something like that, I now had uh, the XYZ components of the position, XYZ components of the velocity, XYZ components of the rotational velocity, four additional components for the attitude as a quaternion. Um, if you don't know what a quaternion is, that's not super relevant here. Um, and yeah, and then th does that kind of answer your question? Yes. Is the like the order of those variables significant? So. No, not really. There is kind of like ways that people tend, tend, typically you would go in the order, like if you're doing a physical system, you do position, then velocity, but that's more just for like how people intuitively read it. Uh, that's not like a significant mathematically. Um, you could flip any of the states and it would change your equations, but the end result is still the same. Um, and I, I should probably clarify a bit here. Basically, what A and B are doing, A is basically saying, uh, do you guys, uh, ooh, Jacobian's a Calc 4 thing. Do you guys remember Jacobian's? A little bit. Basically, it's like imagine all the, as a multivariable uh, derivative. Basically, what each term in this Jacobian does is it says, how does the state change depending on one particular variable? Um, so in here, we see F1. That is uh, the first component of uh, the final output. How does that change based on just uh, X1? And then how does F1 change depend on Xn? And then... It's the same thing going down where now we're varying which F we're talking about. Fn has that to change depending on x1. Does that make sense? We can always, you know, look at more examples there. It, it probably would be helpful too just to go back and re review a bit of your Calc 4 notes just to catch up on Jacobians, I guess. Um, yeah, and then it's same thing for B, where B is saying, how does, uh, you know, F1, how does that compare, change depending on the first control input, et cetera. Uh, and this, this puts it in a nice standard linear form, which is useful for analysis. Um, do you guys have any more questions about this general standard linear form before I move on? Okay. Um, so as a quick thing, what if your system is nonlinear? As I said, that's harder to control. Uh, I think nonlinear controls is one of the harder grad, course, grad courses at WPI. Um, typically, you know, a good first thing to do is to try and make simplifying assumptions, get rid of nonlinear terms that might not have very strong effects. Um, for example, uh, if I'm modeling a, you know, spacecraft, um, if, if I'm not modeling it for that long, it might make more sense just to use the nice, simple, 
um, just Keplerian orbit, which is, you know, just modeled as an ellipse, that's very easy and actually has analytical solutions for it. Um, and so that's nice and linear. Um, if I'm doing something more complicated that demands much more accuracy, then I might need to start adding in um, nonlinear terms like uh, the effect of the, you know, oblateness of the Earth on the spacecraft. Basically, because the Earth doesn't have uniform mass distribution, that affects how spacecraft orbit. Um, but it also makes your equations much more complicated. Um, but the other option is to linearize your function, which essentially is just approximating your nonlinear function as a linear function. Um, so kind of here, um, if I have, can you guys see my cursor? Okay. So if I have, you know, some nonlinear uh, system that behaves according to this blue line here, uh, and I want to apply a lot of the more typical control theory uh, things for it, uh, I can linearize it about a point. Uh, in this case, we'll refer to that as X star. And basically, that's just finding a tangent line, pretty much. Um, it's typically, it won't be a line because you'll have usually have more than two dimensions, um, but it's whatever the line plane equivalent is in whatever dimension you're working in. <laughs> Um, and that, that's basically what's happening here where we're saying, uh, our linearization of the function is F of X star, which is basically that point plus, uh, your change in X times the derivative basically is just that line. Does that equation make sense how it's formulated? Um, typically uh, when you're picking X star, basically where you want to linearize it around, you typically want to pick the point that you're, that, you know, you want as your control. Um, so for example, if I want, uh, my airplane to stay at a like fixed altitude, I would probably pick that altitude and the cruise conditions of the aircraft, basically the like conditions at which it will stay in steady flight, I'd probably pick that as X star. Um, the further away you stray from X star, the less accurate your equation is. Um, but it, as long as you're staying reasonably close to X star, it's a good enough approximation that you can get a good control law and adequately control your system. Uh, so... Do you guys have any questions about any of that state space math stuff before we continue on? Okay. Uh, so now we'll get into numerical integration. Um, so, yeah, so uh, as I said earlier, uh, all our stuff is, for the most part, differential equations. Uh, it We almost always have our state as an equation for dx uh, or x dot, how our system is changing. Um, and as I mentioned before, we very rarely have an analytical solution. Um, you know, if we're doing something simple, like we want to model how a pendulum uh, moves, that's pretty nice. There's just a couple equations for that. You can find the an equation x of t that's just time dependent for your system. Um, an analytical solution is great because you only need to evaluate the function once and you have your answer. Um, typically though, we need to settle for a numerical solution, which essentially means through doing a very large number of calculations, we get a very good approximation of the function. Um, as an example, uh, do you guys remember Riemann sums? Riemann sums are, they're not exactly a numerical method since it's a uh, sum. I think, are Riemann sums usually infinite sums or is that only some of them? I forget whether or not that's a requirement. Oh, well. 
Um, but you recall, like, you're basically trying to fit a bunch of rectangles underneath your line, right? It's kind of uh, what we're kind of going to go look at is kind of a similar concept. Um, so, you know, as I said, recall how we have this defined. Um, in order to solve a differential equation, basically get from your uh, x dot equation to your x, we need to integrate that with respect to time. Uh, and to do this, we'll use numerical integration, which basically approximates the uh, integral. Um, and this works on first order differential equations. If you're if you have second order differential equations, you probably probably need to do some work to get around that. That's that's spacecraft dynamics nonsense. Um, so the one of the most basic methods for this is Euler's method, uh, where essentially what's going on here is we're taking um, this is we're starting to get into you know more bit more algorithms type stuff. So in this case, we're uh, what we're dealing with here is discrete rather than continuous. Um, do you do you guys kind of know what? Uh, I assume you get. Do you guys have a good idea of discrete versus continuous as far as functions go? I figured Abby would know. <laughs> Basically, what that means is rather than dealing with you know our smooth line function, now we're just dealing with points. Um, so we know points along the function. We anything in between the points we don't know. We only know the points. Um, yeah. So in this example of Euler's method, essentially what we're doing is we're starting at our initial point. Uh, typically, that's a given. Uh, in our case, that'd be, that'd be your initial state, which you are typically given or have an estimate of or something. Um, for example, you know, a rocket on the launch pad, you know that it's Position is zero relative to the launch pad. It's not moving. Its velocity is zero. Its orientation is likely pointed up 90 degrees, whatever. Um, but basically what we're doing is we're approximating the function as a straight line along each interval. Uh, so basically what we're doing is starting at the initial conditions, finding the derivative, basically the slope at that point, and then stepping along that much for one step and the step size is defined by that uh, constant h um, and then after that we reevaluate the derivative of the function and do another step and then same thing in another step um, this concept kind of making sense okay um, in general though Euler's method isn't actually that accurate. And I mean, you can kind of see how over time uh, the estimate diverges from the exact function. Um, and you can decrease the amount it diverges by by reducing the step size, but we, we have more efficient uh, algorithms for doing the same thing. Um, so onto the uh, very popular uh, fourth order runge kutta method. I know this is a lot of equations. You you don't need to uh, know how to solve all these equations by hand. The 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 big important thing with all these numerical integration algorithms is you should never be evaluating them by hand. This is something you program a computer to do. Um, and I, I'm thinking uh, as an exercise later on, I might have you guys actually implement RK4 yourself. Um, basically, this is doing the same thing as Euler's method, but instead of just doing uh, the slope at one point, we're actually taking the weighted average at several points along the step. Um, and so that gives us a much better estimate of how it's changing. Um, and, you know, this does kind of the same thing as this where we're getting discrete steps, but now uh, we're going to be a lot more accurate to the original function. Uh, yeah, so basically 
each of these K's is like, you know, that point along the line. Um, and so, yeah, to kind of go into some of the other things, a um, bit of a uh, fun fact, uh, the runge kata methods, those are the most common ones. RK4 is probably the one of the more popular ones because of how simple it is. Uh, it's a good balance between simplicity and efficiency. Uh, and Euler's method is actually technically the first order runge kata method. Um, a, another popular one is the runge kata Fellberg method, which I'm not going to go too much into the details of how that's done. Um, but basically, it's combining a fourth and fifth order runge kata, uh, RK, RK4 and RK5, uh, and that allows it to dynamically pick the step size. And basically what that means is in parts of your function where you need a smaller step size to get better accuracy, it reduces step size. But in parts of your function where it's more constant and uh, like isn't changing as much, it will increase the step size to make it run faster. Um, for the most part, uh, in most situations, you'll be using a numerical integrator that's built into a toolbox that you're using, like MATLAB or SciPy. Um, I've not used any of the SciPy ones, um, but in MATLAB, probably the most common one you'll see is OD45, uh, and that's based off of RKF45. It's basically MATLAB's flavor of it. Uh, and yeah, all of those are designed for different types of functions. There's also, you know, there's a lot of ones that just have different numbers there's you know like od ode 23 ode 15 s um they're all a little bit different you can always read about them on the documentation um so is this concept of numerical integration making sense for you guys okay uh oh dang that was the end wasn't it uh okay so i guess uh before we do anything else uh do you guys have any like general questions about any of the content we've looked at so far how are all like the methods they shared on the last slide like how does that relate to control theory oh okay so basically the way that relates we have um so we have in our system that's defined as x dot right we have an equation that shows how the system changes which actually you know i should go back to sharing shouldn't i um give me a moment so if I scroll back, uh, recall that we have our standard linear form, AX plus BU. This X dot, that's a differential equation that we can solve using all these numerical integration methods. Uh, and basically, you know, think of this, you know, the exact function here, that's the true state. Uh, that's the, you know, 100% correct of how the system is behaving. And this line would be our approximation of how the system is behaving. Um, what's and the point I, of I'm not using, huh? what's the point of not using like the exact model? So the point of not using the exact model is that usually we can't find it. Uh, let me, oh, I'm trying to think if I have a good example on hand. Um, I'll pull up a very extreme example. Is this for typically more like complex systems where you can't perfectly model something? So that that's the thing is a lot of differential equations, it's either just don't have a solution or it's oftentimes just easier to do this and easier to just do a numerical integration. Uh, and keep in mind also, I am saying, you know, it's an approximation but typically the like 
error in the approximation is very low. If you're using a modern computer, uh, you can have the step size low enough that you get very accurate um, simulations. Uh, so what I've pulled up here is the, um, this is, sorry, uh, this is the a whole map of all the equations that I used for my MQP to uh, describe the system dynamics of the rocket. And all this isn't important. What I'm going to do is zoom in on this thing over here, uh, D omega. Uh, this, this omega, that's your rotational velocity. Um, and if we look at it, it's a vector. Uh, basically, Probably more accurately, this should be uh, omega dot, but clearly I wasn't thinking very hard when I made this. Um, that's given by this equation, which depends on, I believe this is this is the m net moment on the rocket, uh, and you know these. Oh, sorry, these i's are the different components of the moment of inertia on the rocket, or the principal axes. Uh, basically, how resistant the rocket is to changing its rotation. And uh, these omegas are the current rotational velocity. So we can see, you know, our our equation for omega here, for d omega, uh, omega dot, how, how omega changes, depends on what omega is at this moment. And it also depends on all these other factors. Um, and something like this, this is, there's no analytical you can't solve this algebraically uh there's no way you can get a nice solution for just like i can't get like i'm not going to write it out i can't just get an equation for omega um and it seems like that should be less common i guess but in a lot of situations it's either unreasonable or impractical does that help yeah so that would be why you use those different techniques to try to approximate the model yeah um yeah uh so okay so i guess this went a little bit faster than i was expecting uh, so do you guys want to, uh, so you guys all have MATLAB or your preferred computational or scientific computing language, like installed on your computer? Okay. So what I'm thinking just as like a first exercise thing, um, or actually, what? Let me stop sharing my screen. I want to see if I can quickly find an example of I'm going to find some of my control homework uh, from way back when when I took the course. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to have you guys, you know, try implementing, uh, I guess, RK4 for yourself. Um, as a kind of exercise and figure out, you know, how exactly this works. So if you want to go ahead and just open up Mat MATLAB is probably preferable since I can give better advice on that since I don't know SciPy and stuff as well. Um, but okay. Okay, I can get back to sharing my screen again. Uh, so uh, here we can see this is a uh, assignment that I did um yeah so it looks like i don't know what is actually being simulated in here or actually you know what let's check uh that was this is problem four okay oh this is actually pretty uh relevant so basically, this is a model of a landing rocket. Uh, so 
you know, our our model here has the uh, basically this is me plotting the state vector over time. Um, we have the x position, the y position, the x and y velocity, and then uh, I believe this theta and omega. That's probably Did I actually say what that is anywhere? No, I don't. My homework is unhelpful. That's probably, you know, the angle at which the uh, rocket thruster is pointing and how much thrust it's producing. Um, and then you also have the mass because the mass changes over time. Um, but you can see the way that this is getting simulated is basically I have uh, RK4, and that that this is a function I wrote myself. Um, and I do, you know, at state, uh, and that's my state equation, which is down here where I have, oh, here we go, uh, all the different, um, this is, you know, the x dot vector, how each x is changing. Um, and that then gets given to this. It's also given the initial state. And then also a time span for which to simulate it. So it's basically going from the initial time to the final time. And then I have a time step. Um, so. OK. Uh, so I'm thinking we probably don't have enough time for. Okay, I'm thinking maybe it might just be helpful for me to just show you what my RK4 looks like, just so you can have an idea of what's going on. Um, so actually, just for a quick reference, this is the same syntax that OD45 uses. Um, if I so if I'm to, to run this, you know, we get or this is similar syntax. Um, this outputs some graphs, and these are all the individual states over time. So each each uh, graph here is basically one element of that state vector and how it changes over time. Um, but, OK, so to actually go and look at RK4, uh, we can see. Uh, let me pull up the slide to. RK4, so you can see the equations. Uh, basically, this is a for loop going over you know every time step pretty much and at each time step it then calculates k's one through four and then you know use that to compute the next x so is this kind of does the algorithm kind of make sense i guess okay um yeah, so I guess this is a, as far as all the content I wanted to do for uh, today. Um, next time, the plan is to kind of do a little more like hands on programming stuff. So I'm going to have a couple like you know, different like exercises for you guys to kind of like work through um, to actually apply some of what we've done and I, I might go over like one or two additional topics but we'll see how it goes um yeah so okay so this is this is kind of like a general way of just uh how you, you know you go about simulating a control problem is you know you'll totally have all this but then in your this equation down here that's getting integrated, I would also have some like control law here where I'm doing u equals and then whatever my control law is that decides what u is supposed to be. Perhaps u is supposed to just be the same as x3. So I'll just do u equals x of three. I don't know. Um, and then u would usually be somewhere in this model down there. OK, well, in that case, uh, any last minute questions before I stop recording?
Okay. I will stop that now.